Hey, Rob, about y'all. Get them in the building. You don't want to miss this. Skype ape is the north gate. When we knock, you better bump straight. And the ancestors are looking out for us. Todd Hayes is exposing them, man. Okay, you see that chair right there? See how big it is? Yeah. Now look at the Pope chair under. Scroll down, look at the Pope chair under. Never yeah. have it been made yeah. so clear. Young TV. Running the game right now. Young TV. Time to take over. Young TV. We the hottest in the game. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button. If you just not too late. TV. Share like on your Instagram, Facebook. Young Broadcasting Yo. live from 2030, baby. Uh-huh. Yo. Yo. Taking over the game, baby. Oh, yeah. Likes up in the air, you heard me? Yo, TV. Ride by. Hotel. It's long. Yo, TV. Assalamu alaikum. Flow left. Yo, TV. Hit that like. Hey, peace <laughs> and love and harmony. We back with another banger with Skype Ape at the North Gate. Chief Pontiac in the building, giving us a report on the land. You heard me? And we're doing the death of the selfish gene, you know, the selfish. Hey, Rod, man. So everybody was uh, asking about this topic, man. So I guess we'll start like that with that. What is this topic, man? People, he was asking, what's this about? Okay, uh, pull, pull up the book, The Selfish Gene, first. The book cover. So why are you doing that? So we all know that at one point in time, we had a what we call 12-strand DNA helix. But now it's only two. And they believe that because it's only two, that we have less functional DNA than when we had the 12 strands. The codes for the DNA upgrades come in through the UV rays. Um, can I get y'all in the comments to say, shout out to brother Ka Ka Kalai? Shout out to brother Kalai. One love. He be dropping on the um the UVB rays, the um, sun blood scenarios. He uh that's what he be doing, right? So when we talking about these the DNA upgrades coming in and with the new age, these upgrades are going to be passed to us on UV rays or what we call radioactive frequencies. Notice the word radio and active, right? So you know what the radio is. That's a communication receiver box. And an active one is a radio that's getting sound. Remember Elijah Muhammad called us radio heads, right? So the selfish gene was, uh, was discovered by Western scientists in the last like 35 years or so. Just like uh, right here, you see where it say Pleiadian Agenda, then you got the God Gene, the Great Awakening, all these are books. So a lot of the receipts wow. today is books where they can go and do more research yeah. into the topic, right? But the selfish gene is uh, it shows itself in the people that we call narcissists. Right, which is uh, people that are so so me oriented until they only care about them. They don't care about nobody else. Right. This was a 
trait that we got into our blood from the Enlil line amalgamating with the Enki line of the Earthborn. Right? <clears throat> so, um, we're looking for the selfish gene. That's the one we're looking for. It's in there too, because I know it was one of the first ones I sent you. So this is the book reference. The Selfish Gene book is the book reference to have a basic understanding of what we're talking about today. It's called The Selfish Gene. Don't look like all the images came through, Elder. Yo, Rod. It don't look like all the images came through. That's like it's cutting you out. No, I said it don't look do. like all of the images loaded on your computer. Yeah, they you know that they acting funny, man. Taking their time. Now, what's the name of the book again? Because it studied you out so good. Can you hear me? It's called The Selfish Gene. It's called the selfish gene, Elder. Man, I'm telling you, bro. Oh, uh, the selfish gene. I heard that part. But I can't even see see the uh, image just because they ain't coming. All of them ain't coming through. Too many people in the back. Uh, the selfish gene. Damn, bro. I wish I would have knew you was gonna put uh, which ones you was gonna do in order. Yeah, I don't normally I don't normally send them to you in order. All right, so we're gonna have to let's let's readjust. Let's just go through them one by one because these are gonna be references that they're gonna give. But let's start with the man with the ball on his shoulder, with the world on his shoulder. That's Atlas. <clears throat> so the uh, way that there you go, right there. Richard Dawkins. No, it's, it's right there. Yeah. Okay, so this is the book that's the foundation yeah, of this is the foundation of today's topic. Right? And in this book, he goes about um, how the selfish gene operate, what they discovered from it, etc. Like that, right? So once you understand that mm -hmm. it's not normal for two people to grow up in the same household, one of them willing to get the other one everything they got, but the other one willing to take everything but not get nobody nothing. They feel entitled, right. like 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 every like the world owe them something, right? That's the selfish right. gene at work, right? Now, the selfish right. gene is a prim primal reptile trait, right? It comes from the lower brain stem called the reptilian brain in the human brain the okay. old the old mammalian brain which is the junction between your cerebral cortex and your reptilian brain which includes your hypothalamus and other parts but the, the old mammalian brain now we're talking all atlanteans when that brain was the primary uh brain is when we had like 12 13 strand dna but we had a barataire gland right <clears throat> okay. so you know how um let's let's go to google for a minute and pull up 57 bel air i want to uh show them the difference matter of fact 57 cadillac it's still a cadillac but 57 cadillac All right. and then we're gonna pull up uh then we're going to pull up a 2012 Cadillac. This is for a purpose to show you that with progress, efficiency forces the smaller area for a thing to function. 
right? So when you look at the auto industry, you can use it as a parameter to understand how your DNA is expanding and contracting, but it's all upgrades. From here, it's all upgrades. The last time it was degenerated was when they created the worship gene. Right? Remember the worship gene, right, Elder? And Naki put it in there so that the humans yeah. can have reverence. Right. Yeah. So the worship gene. Yeah. Uh, but if y'all want to get more about it, was it? Uh, 50, 1957 Cadillac. So when you're dealing with this with people that that's matter. operating from the selfish yeah. gene, we call that yeah. operating from the lower self. You see this guy right here? Now you see how big it is? Yeah. yeah. Okay, now pull up a 2010 STS. Just erase the date. And then and you're yeah. gonna see the difference in the size of the car. Like, it's yeah, still a Cadillac. It. It's still a Cadillac, but it's a STS. It's and it's a more up to date model. STS Cadillac. Right, here we go. All right, now click on one of them so you can see the car, so you can see the car in the bigger Eight picture. Miles. All right, now you see how how small yeah, and right streamlined here. that is compared to the other ca Cadillac. They both Cadillacs. Yeah. It's about a fifty year, yeah. sixty year yeah. difference in the years of these two cars, but you see how sleek streamlined and downsized and they also use what we call lighter materials right yep. fiberglass so right now we used to be 50 feet tall why are we not 50 feet tall no more mm -hmm. it's, it's not efficient enough for us to operate with the oxygen carbon ratio in the current atmosphere let me say that again mm -hmm. It's not functional to operate as a 50 foot tall individual with the oxygen carbon ratio being what it is in the current atmosphere. Uh -huh. When we when we was 50 feet tall, we didn't breathe um, just the oxygen molecule. We breathe, breathe double oxygen or what they call ozone was the primary the primary oxygen source. Uh -huh. Right. Now, we're not 50 feet tall no more. We average between 5'5 five, five and 7 feet tall on average. Anybody uh -huh. over 6'7 over is considered a modern-day giant. That's right. Right? So Shaq would be considered a giant. That's right. The Paul White, the wrestler known as the Big Show, would be considered a giant. That's right. Man Manute Bowl is a giant. Um, what's the Chinese basketball? Yao Ming is a giant. Yeah, Yao Ming, Will Chamberlain. Oh. Will, all those are modern day giants. The reason they ain't not 50 feet tall or 20 feet tall is because the change in the atmospheric pressure. Mm -hmm. that makes right. Sense. So the upgrade, the upgrade to the DNA, the human body is trying to find what they call 100 percent efficient operation. What do that mean? That means that. For the same, for the amount of energy you you uh, burn, is the same amount of energy you consume until there is no loss between the transfer of the two. Uh -huh. Right, that loss that happens in the transfer of energy consumed to energy used is called entropy. Let's look the word entropy up, Elder. E n t r o p y. Hey, hello. <laughs> Hold up. You know, my computer is slow. I know. I'm no, waiting on e t r e n t r o p y. Hold up. 
right there. Click that. Can you make that bigger? I got you. All right. See what it said. Can you read it? Just read it to him. Entropy is a measure of the disorder of a system or energy unavailable to do work. So if it was 100% efficient, it would it would balance its energy use to energy consumed, and that's the perfect transfer or the perfect ratio of what they call superconduction, right? So this picture that we was just reading off of, this is a uh, this is a descriptive analysis of entropy or the loss of energy, right? Now, <clears throat> now if you go from um, you see, now you gotta look at the uh, solid liquid gas, right? And you see where it say increasing entropy, increasing disorder. As you move from the solid state to the gas state, you see the transfer is causing you to lo lose more energy in the gaseous state than in the solid or liquid state, right? So this is right here is what they call the three states of matter. Solids, liquids, and gas. Okay. Right. From the three states of matter, right, we begin to uh, um, see how the difference between substances interact with each other. Right. So, how do water, a, a liquid, interact with dirt, a solid? It creates mud, something in the middle. Right. Um, you can also make water. Water is one of the only elements you can find it in all three forms. Right? You can't find um, fire in a liquid form. But you can find some liquids that's hot enough to set some shit on fire in its natural state. Right? Yep, Andre the Giant was also a modern day giant. <clears throat> okay, um, you still there, right, Elder? So anyway, uh, as we go into these, um, this new millennium coming with the Aquarian age, we have something called uh, solar storms. We have what's called sun storms. And then you have blasts of energy that's called, uh, uh, shit. Solar storms, sun solar flares okay so the solar flare is the sun spitting out a specific frequency of energy the frequency of energy that the solar flare spits out is normally directed at one of the plants planets so like you got um venus you got um mercury you got Earth, you got Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune. When the sun sent off bursts of energy, that energy has to go through the planet to the core. And on its way down, it's collecting planetary data, and the communication is going to hit the core of whichever planet it is. Let's say it's Jupiter, right? Jupiter, the gift giver, but Jupiter can't give the gifts until the judge that is called Saturn signs off on the energy signature. So the sun going to send these solar flares. They're going to hit the planet, all of the planets, and then they will all send the message back to the sun, right? When the message get back to the sun, after being reflected from the core, it's going to tell the sun the state of each planet, the planet's overall health, and the sun is the brain of the solar system. So the sun is so the problem solved, and then it's going to send back a burst of energy. This burst of energy is going to be what you call corrective data. The corrective data is going to say, hey, Earth, I found that the mitochondrial frequency in the males is vibrating too high for the masculine energy, which is causing the men to become feminine fix that so the earth when the sun's message get to the core it's going to send out another message from the center of the earth's core 
back out to the surface of the earth that's going to talk to all of the genetics of every species on the planet. And it's going to say, there's too much mitochondrial in the males. They act in feminine. And the corrective measure is to turn down the mitochondrial in the men, but the women is the ones going to do it, right? The woman that he loved is his mitochondrial sponsor to earth. That's your personal ambassador from to earth as a man. If you hear and you think you're being slick because you think you're getting a whole bunch of chicks uh, and you uh, what they call uh, whoremongering, right? That's not the same. Because as soon as you piss off the wrong two or three sisters and they get tired of you, they'll shut your mitochondrial off and you'll shrivel up like you got HIV or cancer. Right? Okay, now, when we come out of this situation, we're going into something called Atlas Shrugs. Let's show them the picture of Atlas, uh, Elder. Hey, man, it's like when I try to share my screen now, the, com the computer's doing something funny, but I'm going to try to do it again but you're getting on line we might have to it's something going on i think because i let somebody hold my laptop today so i gotta uh like delete the shit that they put on now but let me try to share the screen one more time without it cutting off because it just, just cut me off trying to do it well we'll try one more time if not yeah, we just go we we'll just go through in the uh we start taking questions at about uh 9 15. i might get the slides on they got the slides I still got the slides. Hold up. Damn, man. I can't believe this. I don't know what they download on this computer that's making it where it won't do it. All right, yeah, we just go through the slides. Hit go to Atlas Scrug one right here. It's a book written by a lady named Ann Rand called Atlas Shrug. Right. And Atlas Shrug is part of a three book series that was written by three different authors. Right? Um, you see it say Anne Rand's Magnum Opus. Uh -huh. Okay, that means her great work. Uh, right. So when you read this book, uh -huh. it's going to remind you of uh, uh, Hunger Games. Right? It's also going to remind you of Eon Flux. Mm -hmm. And it's going to remind you of equilibrium. This is a post a post apocalyptic. I mean, after the revelation or after it's been made known to the people, and mm -hmm. everything fell apart on Earth, meaning the old system is dead. This is the building of the new system in the aftermath. Mm -hmm. Right. The book that's the one before this is called 1984 by George Orwell. In the book 1984, th that book is about when the government has went totally tyrannical, right? See, it's a DNA upgrade. The reason why this is uh, mm -hmm. uh, actually a hemisync or uh, balancing of the brain frequencies, left and right hemispheres, to aid in your DNA upgrade. When I do a class on sigils, I'm going to show you how to write apps to add to your DNA in order for you to uh, upgrade your DNA with a pencil and a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. we, ain't, we ain't gonna get in that right now. But the DNA upgrades is gonna come in anyway, mm -hmm. right? It's coming in on the sound frequency on a radioactive carrier vibration that's coming from either two places. The sun is the primary, but at the close of the age, we have what's called a the great being or the great awakening vault, which is coming from the center of creation and it sweep all through creation. Anything that's not compatible or not where it belongs will be annihilated instantly. Mm -hmm. You might not even have a, 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 a visual of the people that were standing next to you in your in your memory bank because Sometime when they get removed, it re removes the entire memory from the human memory system, what we call the universal egregore. Mm -hmm. Right <clears throat> now, <clears throat> go to the next slide. 
So as your DNA upgrade, the women are going to be moving into what we call a mitochondrial harmonic resonance that's going to be them communicating with the earth like a grid, right? All of the matriarchs mm -hmm. that's going to be, they're going to be trying to get on the same page. That's called the Sybil effect. The Sybil effect mm -hmm. got three distinct descriptive um, patterns, right? So we know about a thousand women that say they reincarnated as Cleopatra or they yeah. reincarnated as Isis. They was Isis in the past life yeah. because they all share a similar piece of the memory. They all telling the truth and they all not telling the truth at the same time because in the memory bank, they have enough mitochondrial that ties them back to source genetic DNA of the mitochondrial frequency that they actually can experience the memories of the great mother herself. And only certain ones with a certain energy signature, a certain frequency will be able to perceive it. And that's what will make them say, I was Isis or I was Cleopatra or I was Sekhmet. And it could be more than one and they can all be right. That's, the, that's one of the Sybil effects. The other Sybil effect is when the women right. is suspend what we call harsh judgment, you know, when they condemn everything, um, talk not right. talking bad about people and stuff, when they get out of that energy and right. they go back into what's called the love frequency, that 444, when they get back to that right. frequency, this is the frequency where anybody that touched one of the ones on that frequency will be instantly healed from ailments. Right? That's that touch the hem of his garment, Sam Cook soul stirrer gospel uh, message that they was telling you. The story about so-called Jesus being touched, saying, who touched me? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Right. That's because Jesus was, is Isis. Emmanuel is Heru, the son, and both of them is talking in red to confuse us. That's some good stuff right there. Right. So when the awakening, when the unveiling takes place, this is the upgrading of the DNA. We don't need 12 strands of DNA anymore because we got a smaller, mm -hmm. a smaller data chip that only requires two strands. And these two strands has a sizable portion of inactive, what we call God stuff in the DNA because of the Kali Yuga, the artificially um, induced time of the gods, right? Which was caused by a war in the conjure. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, when these, when these, when this information start coming in, go back to that picture. Yeah, this is the Atlas holding up the earth. Yeah. Now, a lot of the ones that's the high, right now, the ones of us that's the highest rank, they fit their shoulders is in a lot of pain. And this is why, because it's the message from source code saying Atlas is about to shrug his shoulders. Right. When Atlas shrug, it shakes off the parasites. Right. So go to the next, go to the next slide. Okay, now this is the map of the tribes before 1492. This is how uh, the land was already divided up among tribes. And if you look, you don't see a, a single Bible name in there. You see a Bible name in there? No. Nope. Anywhere. No Bible name ain't in there. I'm no. so sick of people telling me that this is the Middle East because they got a name out the Bible. They named that shit after the fact. Of course they got a name out the Bible. You had a bu bunch of Bible thumping, lying motherfucking evangelists excuse my French who went across the land chartering cities with biblical names in order to confuse us in the future. It worked. Because now you got people that swear up and down that this is 
some Middle East or African community because they have biblically named cities over here. Hmm. So this is what you do. If you find a city with a Bible name, look up the year it was chartered. And the year that it was chartered is exactly the year that it has given a name. Because they need a charter, they can't, that's because they don't own no land. Hmm. Right? When you charter something, it's the same as chartering a bus. You don't own it, but you can charter it to take you where you need to go. Yeah, rent it out. You're renting it out. Right. So now all the contracts is closed. This is more of what the land going to go back to than what we have now. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, right here. So another thing that we're not aware of, this has been, this chapter of misery has been an entire um, genetic cleanup from the great debauchery. So when y'all listen to Bobby him and he keep talking about the great debauchery, the great debauchery was that the scientists in the Middle East created hominids, humans, they had a blocked ventricle in the spine that prevented them from being able to ascend. They could never assimilate what's called sacred secretion. So all of the uh, beings that came here, they came here to contribute wherever they from royal DNA into the, fam the human family in order to clean up the great debauchery. Right. Hmm. This is called the obesity gene. The obesity gene or the fat gene is directly from the from the um Daros. Mm -hmm. Show them the Daros, Adam. Hey, that picture I can't show because it a it a flag for that picture. Uh, I got flagged for that picture before. Uh, Daros. Uh, uh, hey, leave it small. Leave uh, zoom back. Leave it small and just like point to it without zooming in on it, so they they can go look it up for themselves. Like most of them look, know what the Jerus look like. They look like now. I can pull up this dude right here and show you his name is Silver, but it's right here. Hold on, I'm gonna show y'all these beans right here. For most of y'all been following us. Y'all know what the Jerus look like. They look like fat elephant trunk people. Right. Um, they are also the ones who brought us the what we call magic mushroom. Right here, right. right here. Yeah. These people right here. So when y'all look it up, the picture right there in the middle of the screen that he got the arrow pointing to, that's the Daros. The fat gene comes from them. Now, why do we need a fat gene? Why do we need a fat gene, Adam? Yeah, that's a good question. It worked like this. Shit, I don't think we need no fat gene. Go ahead. Well, when you're cleaning up the genetic fuck up, you had to have a contingency genetics that counters the, the toxic genetics. So the reason for the fat gene is these people could not gain uh -huh. weight. They was perpetually anorexic in appearance, but even no matter how much they ate. Right. So they can't build muscle mass. Toxic food. Look, they can't build muscle mass because they don't have enough fat inside of the muscle. So the remedy was to inject them with okay. the with the Daros gen genetics. This is why they was brought here, right? And the Pleiadians wow. came, the Pleiadians came to give us genetics as well. That's why you see that in there, the Pleiadian genome. Wow. Now, the Pleiades, the Pleiades is also known as the Seven Sisters, right? And it's actually eight stars. One of them is at a significant difference from the first seven. And that's because for the falling star, a star is rising in order to maintain the balance of the Seven Sisters, right? Mm -hmm. So the obesity gene, as they call it, is the Daros trait. The Daros is the ones that brought us the magic mushroom. Psilocybin um, is the 
that's the modern name for them. Now, this is body typing. I'm glad you pulled that up. You got ectomorph, which is the petite, mesomorph, which is the slender muscular, and then you got endomorph, which leans more toward the, the Deros DNA than the other two. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, go to the next one to show the men. You blow it up. So in men, this is what you're talking about. You're talking about the one that's skinny on the far left, the one that's slightly muscular, and then you had the one that's borderline between muscular and fat. So we trying to get the guy all the way to the left right there, the skinny dude, to become what's in the middle by introducing the one on the right genetics into the ones that's on the far left. You get it? Yeah, mixing half and half. Right. Now, the side effect or the balance in the two would give you the one in the middle, which is what we call optimum gen genetic proportion. Okay. Optimum genetic proportion. That means that the proportion of muscle and fat to the um, skeletal system is per perfectly proportioned. So we also have other genetics from other beings in us. Um, we ain't gonna look look it up right now, Elder, but the term Hertzism, which is excess, this is alien codes, which is excessive hair growth on the face and um, limbs of the body. They call it the wolf boy disease, mm -hmm. right? That comes from the 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 whinies, and it's another hair growing disorder that's characterized by growing hair in strange places on the body. That come from an entirely different alien species of hairy beings, but we call them uh uh enkidoites, mm -hmm. right? So the alien code in the DNA is harmonic frequency in the programming, right? Mm -hmm. Go to the next one. So Star Seed's secret is that our DNA that's about to be activated is going to wake us up and we're going to have our higher self as a personal tutor and they're not going to need Rod Hayes no more. Go ahead. So... When if you look, you see that the lady is blue. This is the 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 ice giants from Norse mythology that Loki is the descendant of. Hmm. Right? The ice princess is the dame of the north. Where they Notre Dame is where they came up with the slave plot as a means of controlling the minds of the people. Mm -hmm. Right? The dame of the north. Her city was called Parthodon of Isis, or what we know today, Par Isis, Paris. Mm -hmm. um, in Latin, para means it's for something. In the who is it for? Isis. So Paris is the city of Isis, but the capital of Paris was moved to Vatican City, and it was set up as the Catholic Church proper. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is the undermining of the divine feminine and the sacred oracles. The Pleiadian mm -hmm. star C light code DNA activation is what Enki used as a timer to activate the species known as the human, the earthborn humans. When the earthborn humans activate, we not going to be friendly to people that don't belong here. But we also going to be cordial to visitors who's coming to show gratitude because when Earth get free from this tyranny, we not just free in the Earth realm. We free in multiple other realms in multiple other places that's been probably held in slavery eons longer than we have. So now mm -hmm. us doing this work to aid and assist any and all righteous, any and all brothers in righteous endeavors and that this endeavor to be righteous is to explain to the people the deception of the wicked, which is the enemy and the enemy is the adversary and the adversary is the devil. The devil right. is the one who swore to be your enemy, not the one who you swore to be their enemy. 
So um, let's go to the next picture. L. I'm trying to get to the ones that talk about the uh, uh, the solar flares. Okay, this right here is the Syrian star seed. This the Syrians are the are the Dogons from Sirius A, Sirius B, Sirius C. When they DNA gonna get upgraded too, this is gonna be their source code. Now notice she's also blue, but she's not from the uh the same clans that we went over a few minutes ago she's blue because she's a skywalker right so the only clans that's blue by nature is the water clans and the skywalkers skywalkers in modern linguistics is called kiswa zulu or zulu is actually the correct term kiswa zulu is the language of the zulu Zulu mean the ones who walk the skies or the star walkers. They got a mirror tribe in the Americas called the Hopi. The Hopi is a skywalker tribe in the Americas, but they come from a different planet in Sirius than the ones who land as Dogons in Africa. Right? So, um, the, go to the next one. <clears throat> star sees symptoms due to awakening and dna activation remember i told you i wasn't feeling well right this what this was i've been going through ascension symptoms and it's been activating certain dna and that's what's been making my shoulders feel like i'm atlas holding the world up right because as i'm getting upgraded I'm experiencing things from the genetic memory bank that turns out metaphysical shit feel physical in the physical world. I'm going to tell it like that. When the spiritual thing is going on, you don't know what's wrong. You're like, man, I feel blah, but I don't know what's wrong. That's because you're going through a spiritual phenomenon and in the physical world, you it's coming out of you as... I don't feel good or I'm in a lot of pain. All of these are symptoms. They're called ascension symptoms. And a lot of us are going to be going through them if we're not going through them to the hilt right now. Next, next flick. No more secrets, no more lies. This is about the awakening of the, of the DNA and the um, star codes in the DNA. When Malachi used to tell us, Elder, when he he say don't believe me check it out some of us is wired a certain way and he know what he talked about when he say that the drive certain chiefs to go do more research makes the research more poignant so we're talking about we got to learn the light codes as they call it the light codes are the um is the information that wakens us up from slumber right and once you start learning the light codes, then you start talking to people using light language. And it sounds like you talk in English, but the frequency just make it resonate. They don't know why, I don't know why I like to listen to you, Rod, but that shit just resonate with me. That's because it's light codes. Next picture. Okay, this one is called The Pleiadian Promise. This is another book to get more into what I'm talking about. We ain't going to go too much over this. I just wanted them to get the reference, right? Um, the search for... This is Dolores Cannon. Dolores Cannon is uh, what you call a, a mother Pleiadian on Earth. So a lot of her stuff... Um, is coming from the feminine line of the earthborn. It's like the earth is a cousin to the Pleiades and they talk all the time. So now one of the daughters of the Pleiadian mother is telling the daughters of the earth, this is what's been going on while y'all was asleep. Let me catch you caught up to speed because I've been listening to Mama Earth talk to the seven sisters and this is what we came up with. So this is why I, you brought her in as a reference. Dolores Cannon is an important individual along with a lady named Linda Moulton Howe. 
She is an investigative reporter that has been investigating the strange phenomenon of our contact with beings from beyond here. Right? So you got Dolores Cannon, you got Linda Moulton Howe, Okay, this is uh, Dean Hammer, the guy gene, right? Now, this is also, I think this is talking about the worship gene, but you do have a guy gene, right? That's, it's a non-selfish, um, problem-solving expression of your genetics, right? So any problem that, that you face with, the guy gene is the one say, okay, if I fix this, who is it going to affect and how is it going to affect them? With the guy gene turned off and the selfish gene turned off, it's going to be more like, how much money am I going to make and how soon can I get it? That's the difference in the guy gene and the selfish gene. The guy gene want to help as many people as possible. The selfish gene want to destroy many people as possible just to help the self. Next one. Okay, this is another reference book, The Pleiadian Agenda, A New Cosmology for the Age of Light. The Aquarian Age is the age of awareness, which everything comes from the darkness into the light. One might. And my godson rising out of prison, will my insight be enough to make these niggas listen? What's missing in these last days? Blind and crooked waves from bombs in the rack to hood. Niggas getting sprayed. Some say my voice ain't for speaking to niggas and I should settle for crack sales or even pulling triggers. Shit, my mind too potent to be sitting around joking, do a mental exercise just to keep my thoughts potent. It's more than life than what these motherfuckers giving us in league with Lucifer. Better watch where they steering us and they fearing any nigga known for dropping the truth for not be the Lord's general as a rally the troops. <laughs> <laughs> Next picture. Elder. Okay, this is uh the spirit of the mushroom. You can skip this one. It's the same. It's just another book about the guy Gene with a different author. Okay, zoom in on this picture because this is silly Osibin himself, right? <clears throat> you see my man standing on top of the mushroom. That's the spirit of the mushroom, and he kind of talked like a cartoon character. When I first met him, he came in with a light show. He was using my neurons firing to give me the light show, right? And I'm like, and I said to myself, what the fuck is this? He said, I'm silly old Simon. <laughs> so <clears throat> he liked that name, he said, because it's a fun name and it's the, his favorite name that the humans gave him since he'd been here. Anyway, He's directly responsible for giving you spiritual insight during the time of a uh, uh, magic mushroom trip, as they call it. Next. Great Awakening. The Great Awakening. See the checkerboard. See the earth rolling over the checkerboard. The checkerboard is Queensland. Right. And if you're looking real close, you will notice you can't see Australia. And Australia is called Queensland because it's the earth seat, the top of the earth of the great mother. Right. Next one. <clears throat> Mushrooms with therapeutic potential potentials. Psilocybin told me that the proboscis monkey is one of the few animals that still use the sacred mushroom to heal their bodies. And then he went to explain to me and show me how it worked. Next one. This is how I seen him in my vision without the stem, but he looked like the head of the mushroom. And when I was in the Astros, I thought he was a, a, a wicked elemental. So I, I zapped his ass. And he was looking at me like, what did you do that for? <laughs> And then the elder told me, no, 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 not to do that. So anyway, I come to find out that he was the spirit of the mushroom that I was zapping. Go to the next one. This is going into uh, the psilocybin mushroom and the uh, effects and different stuff. This is just a reference book for the class. For those who want references, we're going to come dropping a lot of references in here. 
Next one. City of Simon. There you go. Be happy now. Next one. Just another uh, reference. Magic Mushroom, colorful picture. Now, if you ever notice, anything you, you review about mushrooms is going to show you all of these pretty bright colors. That's because part of the trip. Right. This is called breaking open the head. It's another version, another version of it going to pop up in a minute. But this book, there was a guy who was training to be a shaman. And he was trying to see what the um, effects of these psychedelics around the world was having on people. And so he went around the world experimenting. And uh, so this is the book that he wrote explaining what the shamans told him, how it worked and um, how to use the magic mushroom. Another reason why we got a lot of mushroom references in the DNA upgrade portion of the class is because <clears throat> there's something called the stoned ape theory. And we're not gonna look it up, but if y'all wanna look it up, you can look it up. But it's saying that sometime in the past, an ancient ancestor that like Lucy, that more resembled a chimp than a modern day human, was on a mushroom trip and advanced into modern day humanity based on the effects that the mushroom had. Right? Next one. So the stoned monkey, okay, mindscaping. So this right here, I sh it should have been another book I should have had with this called The Holy Science by Sri Yukswar. Um, out of the... Uh, Kriya Yoga Institute started by Paramahansa Yogananda. The mindscaping is learning how to move inside your own mind to access key information and memories. If you don't do mindscaping, it looks like you're daydreaming to a person that don't know what you're doing. But in mindscaping, you're learning how to find information in your own mind. You're learning how you store it. You're learning the process of it. This is a book that deals with assessing um, the mind in order to find a way to have a happier life. Next slide. <clears throat> so the chaos doctrine, you see it say chaos doctrine lifting the veil and then it got the old Michael slaying the beast thing, right? The chaos doctrine, chaos theory is the fact that if it works, it's usable. The first rule in chaos magic is don't open nothing that you can't close. The second rule to chaos magic is if it works, keep it. If it don't, discard it. Right? So chaos doctrine is the understanding how to use the chaos energy. The chaos star is an eight-pointed star. The eight-pointed star is actually the eastern star known as Venus, which is the personification of the divine feminine in her most seductive and feminine form. Next photo. Okay, so the age of Aquarius, right, it's a understanding the meaning of the new world changes and how God wants us to live our spiritual awakening. So anybody tell you God wants you to live a certain kind of way is telling you a bald faced lie. That's the first thing you got to understand. If they trying to convince you that God wants you to follow a book to live your life, they making it up. Right? You don't need no book to live According to what God, God will talk to you personally if you get from under the Amen spell, which conceals your inner God. Soon as you break free from that, God going to tell you that your best life is the only life he wished for you. Next thing is, are you willing to work for your best life? Most of us are not, but we say that we are. Um, God wants you to live your best life. He don't want you to live any other way than what's going to give you your best experience on earth. 
the people who come here with agendas want to dictate to you and use source material to compel you to believe that they're telling you what God wants. That's not what God wants. They're making that shit up. The true and ever living prime creator only want everybody to live a good life. It don't matter if you live a good life as a shit shoveler or as a jeweler. As long as you live the life that you worked for and that you designed for yourself, you living within the confines of God's desire for you. God going to tell you if you live in the wrong life, because when you live in the wrong life, shit just don't go right. But when you live in the life that God gave you, shit that should have you fucked up, just miss you. Next one, Elder. Hey, he's spitting straight fire right now, Roy. Straight facts. Okay, so this is a hermetic code in DNA. This is one of my favorite books because this book goes over the sac sacred principles of hermetics and it goes through <clears throat> modern discoveries in DNA that allows you to see that the frequency matters. The pitch and the tone of the frequency that strikes your DNA coming from in on solar rays, that's what's going to change your whole genetic makeup and make you become the eternal being you used to be before you decided to move into these short lifespans. Mm. So the, um, the healing chamber and the med bed are two of the, uh, two of the discoveries that's going to be unveiled at the world's fair in 2025. Next one. Yeah, I heard about this. Okay. This is just another reference book that go with the last one. Hermeticism. Right. But if you look at the imagery on the front, you will notice that it's uh, the symbol of Tahuti, the medical symbol, the Caduceus, is sitting on top of a chaos star. Mm -hmm. Right. Because in order for you to have an awakening, you have to master the chaos and step into the light. And that's what that's representative of. We'll go into the name, but that's, that's going to take up too much time. All right, this is the seven hermetic principles. Mentalism, right? All is mind. It's the first principle. Thought is thoth. And thoth is to who? The second one is correspondence. <laughs> so from the second principle of hermetics, correspondence is a comparative analysis. This thing <coughs> is to that thing the same as this thing as to that thing. Or on the left hand, you got the dark. On the right hand, you got the light, right? And the correspondence is how do they interact, right? How do they communicate? How does the dark communicate with the light? The next one is vibration. All things are vibration. I mean, they all on the frequency, a pitch, a tone. And when you hear it in the spiritual realm, it's called the songs of the spheres. And it sounds like an orchestra. That's how can Beethoven used to say he knew his whole arrangement. He heard it playing in his head before he ever wrote the first note. Right. Then you have polarity. Polarity is the law of opposites. North Pole, South Pole. Those are poles and the connection in the two or the separation in the two determines the polarity, positive pole, negative pole, right? So um, that's the law of polarity. The next one, number five, is the law of rhythm. This is where the Blue House uh, excel at in the law of rhythm because this is the origin of the blues. The rhythm is the heartbeat and how to catch the beat, how to ride the rhythm of the beat. Then you have cause and effect as the sixth principle or the sixth um, 
hermetic principle. That means that when you do something, you're going to have a direct effect once it's done. But also, when you get into military strategy, you're going to learn about something called a collateral effect. That means you shot a gun, you hit the guy that you was intending to hit. That's what you call the direct effect. But in the process, he had a grenade in his hand and he blew up six people that was standing there with him. They are what you call the collateral effect, the collateral damage. Right. Then you have the seventh hermetic principle, which is the law of gender. Right. Gender is the one that gave men the right to be able to be born to the women of the earth. The law of gender is also um, uh, directly connect to correspondence and polarity. Gender, we only see it as masculine and feminine, but you can have a goon, gorilla man with Shakti energy and you would not be able to tell that he's operating from a feminine energy because the Shakti energy is pure black mama chaos. That's that old lady sitting on the porch cursing out everybody that go past and they all love her anyway. Big mama. Right? When a man operating out of that, he, he can easily be mistaken for a guy that's just always ready for war. Whereas you got your softer feminine energy like your Oshun energy. Right? Your sweet water. That want to lay up under me cuddle with me kind of sensational feminine right then you got your masculine you have your hercules masculine which is difficult to determine from your shakti feminine and then you have your casanova masculine that's hard to distinguish that he ain't no sissy he look like he operating from oshun energy but he have no interest in nothing masculine or male Right. So it's understanding these principles that allow you to understand how to navigate the uh, 3D matrix. The Bible code is a book about codes they found in the Bible. And the reason why you brought that one as a reference book is because everything they do has codes tied to it. The more the codes we see them crack, the more codes we become capable of cracking. So it's like all, if all you do is read crime mystery novels while you're growing up and all of a sudden you find yourself one day as a detective, you're going to end up probably being one of the best detectives because you've been solving crimes your whole life as a child reading it in the book. Right. So the those are codes. That's how you learn how to read the codes. Next book. Next one. Elder. This is a picture of Aquarius. Notice that it's the woman with the water. Now, under the patriarchy, this woman has been painted as a man, just so y'all know. But in its original form, this is Aquarius. She is the water bearer. I don't know if y'all know this, but a couple years ago, a meteor went through Aquarius right where the potty is. That means that it shattered the pot of water from Aquarius. And that means that when the energy finally hit the earth, it's like busting a big ass jug of spirit on earth. Right. Next one. This is a good one because I'll be telling everybody that the womb of the woman is the only simulator to prime creator womb of the universe just like you got shooting stars flying through space hitting the planet you also got the semen flying through the uh, and uh the vaginal fluids trying to get to the egg same principle applies as above so below next fatima in the way of divine love. Now, this is in there because of the 
the children from, I think it was somewhere in South America where they received three messages from, they call it the, uh, the prophecies of Fatima, which is supposed to have been the mother Mary delivering messages to these children. So that's why this here, but this is the, um, a book about it, Fatima and the way of divine love. That's a good reference book to know what I'm talking about. Next one. This is the image. Right. This is the image. And it looked like it's outside of you, but this is actually the image in the center of the brain. There sits a little, what looked like a little man. Right. And this is a extrapolation of that image and is written in, as an artistic expression. So this would be at the root of the brain, the great reptilian seat. Next. Now, from darkness to light. Now, this is what this is talking about. When you are in a state of ignorance. And then somebody educates you on something that's bringing you from darkness to light. Right. From dead to the living. Right. But this real important divine love and the transmutation of evil is the key factors. Now, notice it didn't say the eradication of evil it say transmutation. What that mean? Talk to me. L. What that mean? What do transmutation of evil mean? Hey, to transform, to change your form. Mutation means to, you know, to like to evolve or to mutate, to adapt to mm -hmm. its, not to whatever the environment is. So it transforms mm -hmm. to adapt to whatever the environment and then mutate can also mean that it got better. It got it got more stronger. It got more, uh, you know, like like say if you like you had plants. They didn't have spikes at first, but then animals kept eating them, so they mutated. They transmutated into and the grain spikes and other. You know, it be different perspectives on it, but they changed their form to some. It, it depends on what. It's a different reasons why they could have changed, uh, transmutated. But transmutation to me is like to transform. Okay, you know, so. The the the, the, yeah. the books say the transmutation of evil, right? Yeah. So let me show you what that means. Yeah. You go for a walk, go right, and you get into a fight because some three dudes jump you and you kill one of them, right? The fact that you killed them in and of itself would be evil. But when you go through the self-analysis of why you was doing it in the first place and realize they took the control from you, now you transmuting the underlying meaning of the murder from being a murder to being a self-defense, which is permissible according to the law of nature. You always got a right to defend yourself according to the laws of nature. According to the laws of man, you only got the right to call police. But the law of nature say if a motherfucker trying to kill you, you're supposed to kill him, kill him back harder. Right. Let's go to the next one. All right. Reclaiming stolen earth. This becomes significant because the only ones that can reclaim a stolen earth is the women, the matriarchs. Go Just ahead. say shit. Right. So when, when we're talking about Source codes, light codes, upgrading the DNA. The women, mitochondrial, scan the DNA of any man she sleep with. And right. once you get done scanning it, she extracts certain genetic materials and is stored in the brain in what's known as the Queen's Chamber or the Queen's Library. It's her library of genetic traits that allow her to optimize the birth of her child. If she only ever had one mate, she only got two people's DNA she can choose from, and one of them can call, have a defect. Whereas the if she was a what we call promiscuous woman, 
all them guys that she slept with raw dog, all of their DNA is cataloged and she can go systematically on her subconscious level and pull the files of each one and use whatever she, her mitochondrial says will make a better man than any of the motherfuckers she ever slept with. Man, that's deep right there. Yeah. Yeah, and I can believe that too because some people, uh, based on what Barbara said, like some people when they be together for a long time, they start to look alike and the man, the woman could act like like once the woman start being around the man a lot, some of the DNA off his mother could come off on them, and they can inherit it some of them the mother's DNA traits. Cause I I, I can I see it, man. I've been let's studying it for a while. Let's, let me explain to you what that is, so you will know okay. what you're looking at. Okay, so okay. when you born, your mother is the sole holder of your mitochondrial um, custodianship of the earth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, now your mama gonna pick a chick. You ain't gonna know she picked her, but she gonna she know you better than anybody else. Your daddy may pick one for you too, depending on your rank in the clan. And when your mama pick her, your mama and you meet her, y'all hit it off, and you see that she the right one. And your mom gonna pass your custodianship of your mitochondrial over to the your new chick your wife right once mm-hmm. she does that once she does that she can leave now she did her job once all her sons has been properly sponsored by a, a competent mitochondrial earthborn woman then she can die in peace now because she knows she'll come back in a good family no matter which one of her sons land or daughter land she come through. Yeah, this had to be said. Mm-hmm. This had to be said, so, bro. I'm telling you what you're saying. So the the more psychic your family is, the more likely your mama didn't pick your wife for you because the psychic ability is determined by your birthright to the earth rights. Women are like earth. No, women are mm-hmm. what we call uh um holographic miniatures of earth right now if you see she got an owl on her knee and a fox sleeping at her uh at her right under her right knee those are the mm-hmm. symbols the fox is the uh is the one who overlooked the miners the ones who dig in the earth they spirit mm-hmm. animal is the fox then the owl, black girl magic, the girls with the hooters that can govern over the dream realm is the owl. The night vision is the dream vision. Mm-hmm. Right? So, next one, please. Women of Earth. Because this is a global Earth woman redemption. This is putting the woman back in her proper place so we can be men again. Next one. Yeah, the earth in her hands. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, 75 extraordinary women working in the world of plants. And this is because at one time, all of the medicinal herbs was cataloged by the women. Reference Credo Mutua. I tell you how the mothers went out and picked the herbs and decided to use them for healing. Next one. Look, so look, it say love your mother. You see, it's 50 states, 50 stories, 50 women united for climate justice. Now, the reason why I put this book up there, because I had something called the March of the Matriarchs two years ago, which was a major conjure that's going to take a minimum of two years to manifest. We're coming up on two years. It's called the March of the Matriarchs. I needed 50 sisters, right? to attach their name to a capital of a state by having the same first name, first letter, or last name, first letter to the capital city, right? Anyway, it's called the Curtis Jackson, AKA 50 Cent, Unbreakable Conjure. And when I got the women to do that, 
it was over with. There was nothing else they could do. So it's the second side of the conjure from from Tupac. Tupac came with the first half of it called 50 Niggas, which is actually supposed to be Negus, N-E-G-U-S. But since he was using, um, since we was in the Kanger War, he was using what they used to de uh, to demean us to deliver the message to uplift us. Hmm. That's tribal shit. The Curtis Jackson Unbreakable Conjure was written in New Orleans by 50 Cent, Curtis Jackson, about five lifetimes ago. Wow. Right. So when I seen 50, that's how I know what time it is in the music industry for the next exposure. And if I watch 50, I know everything Pac wanted me to see by watching 50. Hmm. Right. So um, Curtis Jackson is the old what they call him a soul man from New Orleans. Right. He don't he don't walk around using conjure for day to day shit, but he write it and conceal it for a future reference in case he need it. Mm -hmm. Right. So let's go to the uh, women and sacred uh, as sacred custodians of the earth. Now, when we talk about Santa Claus the grandfather clause and Mrs. Claus, the grandmother clause. This is the grandmother clause. Mm -hmm. The women have the oldest contract with the earth older than anybody else's. It's what you call the uh, contract of first right in time, space, and in agenda. That means no matter what it is, this contract, if you grandfather clause this grandmother clause back into effect, it automatically returns everything back to the matriarchy under the great law. Mm -hmm. So what it says is that the women would be the custodians of earth and the earth will be the representative of the great mother. And that the women of the earth being earth born has the first right to secure the future of the earth for se seven consecutive generations or until the earth is permanently balanced. Hmm. So at the close of every age, the earths, the women, come back into power. This is number 44, the white buffalo woman, um, which she on my she, she one of my Facebook friends. I know who she is. But the reason she important is because in the tradition in the culture that the she's one of the matriarchs that has to be found before we can close out all a shit. So I've been found her or she found me, I should say. Mm -hmm. Next. I don't drink. Somebody said, right, I had a cup of Henny. <laughs> yeah, if I was drinking, though, I'd have had a cup. Um, Gias, women who study earth. Now, the reason why that's there, you see this in the middle is EA. That's that's Enki. The G is the seventh letter. That's me. The S means zigzag. Right? And um, it say women who study the earth. Now, it's telling me that I need to make it available for the women to understand the relationship of themselves to the earth, which takes us to the nation of gods and earth, Clarence 13 next, Harlem, New York. This is the image of Gaia or Mother Earth, right? Mm -hmm. And next one. This is the European version of the same Mother Earth called Mother God Goddess Gaia. Next one. All right. This is the description of it. It's kind of blurry. I can't read it, so I ain't gonna worry about it. We go to the next one. All right. Now this is my man. This Clarence thirteen next Father God Allah pudding. He was killed by dirty moors. Some niggas killed him because he told them they wasn't gonna be selling drugs uh, around his kids, and they wasn't gonna be doing all them shenanigans. And they wanted him to shut the fuck up. So they decided to murder him. He ain't the only one they murdered. 
it was a couple of them that was high ranking around that time they got murdered in the uh nation of guys and earths but he he's gonna send somebody back he gonna send somebody back that's gonna reveal um um what they did to him that next one go ahead Okay, this is the lessons, supreme lessons of the gods and earths, man, woman. Now, if you look at the picture, that's a shout out to Brother Kalai again, because that's the thing, uh, man, woman, and child, right? But this is their lessons called the 120s, right? This, it, once you study this, you will understand what people from New York talking about a whole lot better. Next one. Mm -hmm. This is uh, the Hijra 2024 right here. See them elephants? Do you remember your Islamic studies, uh, the Hijra of Muhammad? Can you hear me? Yeah. Did you hear what I asked you? All right. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? You said something about the Israel, uh, Israel Muhammad, about the uh, the Hijra. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, the Hijra in Islam, no. they said they said that it was a whole bunch of elephants that they that the military marched in the Mecca. You remember that? Oh yeah, okay. I right, talking about that part. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's the march of the matriarchs. See, that's what they're not telling us. They use the symbol of the matriarch, which is the elephant. Right. And they tell us the story of Muhammad in uh, 40 uh, AD, I think it was, the, it was the Hijra. The Hijra was the matriarch was coming in to reclaim Mecca and Medina. Mm -hmm. But in the story, you say that Allah, which is actually talking about uh, one of in, uh, Enlil's sons, uh, sent a flock of birds to drop uh, radioactive stones on the um, on the matriarchs. That's yeah, really man. talking about yeah. yeah they they really talking about the planes that dropped the nuclear bombs at the last um, artificially induced ice age. That's really what they talking about. When the women went to make the move to take the earth back. And they uh Enlil ordered them slaughtered. That's what that hijra was. Yeah, uh, Nana. No. Yeah, next picture. One of my favorite quotes, we can accept God becoming man to save man, but we cannot accept man becoming a God to save himself. So that's why I be hearing me all the time. I'd be like. I'd be asking people, I'd be like, what's the difference between a man and a God? What do gods do that men don't do? And what do men do that gods don't do? Because I don't have a problem with people saying they're God. I don't have a problem with them calling their women goddesses. But are you just calling them that? Or are you trying to personify what you're describing yourself as? So it's a difference in the two. Go ahead. All right. Alpha and Omega is Almighty God. The Alpha male meet the Omega mother in order for the end to be flipped back to the beginning. In other words, in the close of the age, the Alpha male, which is the, the, uh, the son of the widow, has to be um, identified by the widow as her son in order to close the age. That's what they call that Alpha meeting Omega. Omega, um, really, they have us believing that it means the ending, mm -hmm. but it don't. It means mega means great, and yep. O, O, in front of it is telling you what's great. That's the uterus, the womb, right? The great womb. The, the yeah, the great, yeah, yeah. So then, when you get to the alpha. The alpha is the alpha male, the top dog, the big dog, the, the chief of all of the chiefs. 
is the alpha male. And the only person can tell the rest of the world who he is, is the Omega mother. She becomes Omega because she's the widow who identifies her son as the widow's son. Mm -hmm. Right now, this is where we were trying to get to earlier. Let's read this out. It says solar storms have dramatically increased this year. Should we be worried? Right. It says NASA warns of solar storm. Here's how it will impact Earth. Now, first of all, I'm going to let that sink in for a minute. But uh, uh, the, the rays that come from the sun are radioactive. Those solar storms are sending radioactive um, alpha waves, gamma waves, delta waves, and zeta waves into the Earth. Mm -hmm. These radioactive waves changes the genetics and it turns on parts that was turned off artificially mm -hmm. so it's like a doctor go in or a mechanic go in look at your car and he find out that there's a shutoff switch to your fuel line that's why your car won't start and he be like oh well why is this off he's just turning it back on he's going about re finding out whatever repairs need to be done when the solar rays come in on these solar storms it's going to determine that, wait a minute, this gene is not supposed to be off. Mm -hmm. And then the, it's going to automatically turn it on. When that happened, a lot of the brain fog we have from the Kali Yuga is going to start to dissipate. And many of us are going to have psychic phenomenon happening. So we need to start talking to ourselves, utilizing self-talk. If I was psychic tomorrow, what psychic would I be? How do I know I would be that? Just questioning yourself. The reason you're doing that is to prepare yourself that when you start experiencing the psychic phenomenon, you already broke through the bear fear, fear, and now you can work with the energy. Right? Now, this say the formation of free radicals. Can you zoom in some more? This is for, uh, hold on, I got you. Right there. Right there. Okay, you see where it says yeah. DNA damage in the middle and it got the DNA helix, but it got those um, codons are broken. They've broken yeah. off. That's, okay, it's saying the formation of free radicals. You see in the upper left, it got a picture of a purple sun that says UV light. Yeah. Right? Now, if you look at the upper right, it, it got cells and it says inflammation. Yeah. Look down to the left, you got air pollution, they got a picture of a factory. Yeah. At the bottom, you have ionizing radiation, which is a nuclear reactor of some sort. Yeah. And then on the bottom right, it says smoking. Mm -hmm. Right. So the free radicals are those parts of the damaged DNA that's flying around in your bloodstream without being part of a DNA helix. These ones that's been damaged, the DNA helix that's damaged, start to mutate from bad connections, and that's the cause. That's one of the primary causes of cancer, right? And there's also another one. If you look, you see a pink piece of mitochondria that say metabolism over it. Mm -hmm. Now, all of these are the formation of free radicals, and free radicals are the broken pieces of DNA that's obstructed your system from operating in its optimum capacity. Go to the next slide, Elder. Yeah, somebody said, that's why fasting is good. Yeah, because what happens when you fast, a three-day fast tells your immune system reset, right? And once your immune system reset, one of the things that it does through uh, ketosis is it starts to consume those free radicals. Now, this a, this is a, a article about um, the strong solar flares. It said the sun emitted a strong solar flare peaking at 12.02 p.m. Eastern on December 14th, 2023. NASA's, NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory, which watches the sun constantly, captured an image of the event. The sun is out in and the evenings are blissfully warm, but is there something strange happening to our skies? And I say yes. 
Over the past month, there have been more frequency reports of aura, aura sightings in the UK and US with the northern lights spotted in lower latitudes than normal. What do that mean, Elder? You know what that mean? Say so, you put out. I say, what do that mean? That the northern light spotted in lower latitudes than normal. Because the uh, the, the sun is moving. I guess I, I don't know. <clears throat> no, so what it's talking about is what we call the Oriori Borealis, right? Yeah. The north, the northern lights, and you normally can only see them only so far south before they be out of your vision. Now, what they're telling us is that these northern lights and the southern lights can be seen closer to the equator than normal. That's what they're telling us. Yeah, so it's the planet is shifting. It's the frequency in the the magnetic poles have shifted. Right. All of this is part of the great awakening and the DNA activation that's going to come in with it. A lot of people are not going to be ready and they might hurt themselves out of ignorance. Mm -hmm. But they're not going to be ready because they think we crazy for even teaching this stuff. But it's all verifiable with the receipts. You got it. Next, next slide. OK, so this is showing you the effects of oxidative stress, right? Oxidative stress means um, uh, uh, oxygen deprivation, right? I mean, you, you, after so long, the oxygen is no longer beneficial, but it becomes toxic because of stressors, right? Mm -hmm. The top showing you a tomato and the bottom is showing you a cell. The cell that gets like the one on the bottom all the way to the right, that's called a cancer cell. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a mutated cell. The tomato all the way to the right at the top, that would call, be called a, a dead tomato, a rotten tomato. Mm -hmm. The one in the middle would too, but especially the one on the end, it's almost just slime now, right? So when you go and you understand oxidative stress and the all that's a list of defects that it caused the body to produce, right? Next, next slide, Elder. Okay, so this is telling you about mutations. This is important because when the radiation hit the cell, that's when, watch this. Mutations result either from errors in DNA replication, which breaks up to which gives us free radicals, or from the damaging effects of mutagens, that mean like chemical chemicals, such as chemicals and radiation, which react with DNA and change the structure of individual nucleotides. All cells possess DNA repair enzymes that attempt to minimize the number of mutations that occur. Right? Top right, Elder. Mm -hmm. You gotta scroll up to the top right. Gene mutations. A change in the DNA of a gene is called a mutation. Now, keep that in mind. A change in the DNA of a gene is called a mutation. So, a mutation don't have to be bad or good. All they have to do is guarantee a change in the current gene in the DNA. Mutation is gametes. Mutations in gametes can be passed on to offspring of the affected individual, but mutations in body cells affect only the individual in which they occur. Gametes are like your chromosomes. Okay. Mutations. Any unpredictable change in the structure or amount of DNA on an organism is called a mutation. Most mutations occur in somatic meaning body cells and are passed from one generation to the next. That's called a hereditary mutation or a birth defect, if it's for the negative. Only those mutations which occur in the formation of gametes can be inherited, which they mean by the uh, chromosomes you inherit. Next, next slide, Elder. This, we already went over this, just a different 
version of it. Okay, now, this become important. Synthetic receptors can be added to the DNA. This is like mRNA um, inhibitors, right? Now, if you notice, you got on the left testosterone, progesterone, and uh, B estradiol, which is estrogen, right? Mm -hmm. And they creating a artificial um, receptor in order to allow cells that like they shouldn't be um, active to activate. So this is basically genetic sex change. Next picture. Wow. Yeah. Okay, now we're going into another artificially um, altered part of our DNA. This is based on the work of Cynthia Kenyon at the University of LA, Berkeley, who's a gerontologist. And one of the things she discovered is something called the DAF2 gene or the DAF2 gene receptor, which is the aging part of the genome. Now, there's two reasons we age. One of them, is the DAF2 reject, uh, receptor on the, on the cell allows us to receive uh, a data byte in the form of the DAF2 gene that tells us to age. Mm. By blocking the DAF2 gene, they've been able to extend the life of microorganisms and of mice up to four times their average lifespan. The second cause of aging is something called the uh, receding telomeres. Every time your genes replicate, the telomere is the covering that's supposed to allow you to perpetually regenerate your DNA and continue to uh, live without breaking down due to entropy. So the DAF2 gene she created a DAF2 gene blocker, right? And then, you can go to the next one while I'm talking to her. From that, the, this is her right here. This is Cynthia King. And they say, mutation, this is talking about the DAF2 gene right here. Mutations that reduce activity of a gene called the DAF2 double the worm's lifespan. So she's talking about the, um, these worms, they got a 30-day lifespan. And they use the chemical to block the DAF2 gene, and they end up living um, from 90 days, I mean, from 30 days up to damn near 90 days, with the only change being the blocking of the DAF2 gene. Next one. So this is showing you how the process ran in the experiment. Right. So the DAF2, different mutant alleles, which are genes, differential alterations. So now we're showing you the control groups, which is the DAF16, DAF16, DAF16. Those are the three control groups. Different isoforms and different tissues. Right. And then it say the different uh, cystic pathologies causes of death. It's talking about what we call natural causes, you age out and die. That's what she's talking about. Next slide. <clears throat> this is uh, another uh, diagram of the DAF2 genes. It says the DAF2 gene encodes for the insulin-like growth factor one receptor in the worm. That's the name of the worm. And the DAF2 is part of the first metabolic pathway discovered to regulate the rate of aging, meaning this is the first gene they ever discovered that they can show you the rate in which you age by the stages that the DAF2 gene has taken in your body. Next slide. That's the last slide right there. Okay, so... Um, Hey, keep talking for a second. I got to go ahead and turn this stuff off. Just keep talking. Go ahead. I, I okay. got a question for you when I come back. Hold on. All right. Go ahead. Okay. So from here, we know that the, the selfish gene not natural to us. The fat gene is part of the genetic cleanup. 
and that's going to be balanced out with UV rays. Also, we know that the tail mirrors have been altered. We've been given the gene that make us become holier than thou, called the worship gene. Um, and that as the, as the age close, we're going to be getting um, radioactive signatures or signals from source and from the sun. Both of them coming in at this time because of the arrangement of the positioning of the stars. And even though it seems like the stars don't move, they are, everything is constantly moving. And because everything is constantly moving, there are certain places that when we get to causes massive changes, we call that the closing of the age. At the close of every age, the earth has to cleanse itself. We call that Atlas Shrug. And in the aftermath of Atlas Shrug, then this is what we call coming online in the matrix. It's basically we all about to get massively purple peeled where we can see both the matrix illusion and we can see behind the illusion and we can use one to help us capitalize on the other. So all our DNA is going to change. It's going to be upgraded. And for the ones that are wondering if we're going to go back to 12, 13 strand DNA, no, it's already been phased out. We had a different um, part of the system of development. Now we finna figure out a new system and a new uh, ambition for the human species to attain or strive for for the next seven generations. You want to start taking questions, Elder? Hey. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we take some questions. If y'all want to show Rod some uh, love on the cash app, we got the cash app pending. Hey, Rod, I got a question for you too. Uh, could you drop some? Hey, like this right here class was heavy. People might might sleep on this if they weren't paying attention. But you just dropped some real heavy duty stuff up in here that I'm gonna do some. You, on, on DNA, man, you just dropped some heavy duty, and you put some ca uh, kind of stuff out like this before. But the question I got for you is: so, are they the, with the GMO fruits? With the GMO fruits, okay, so they can go in all the different things. Now, are they making those fruits to uh, affect? I know they're making them to affect, but what's your perspective on those GMO fruits and it affecting our DNA? Does it change the way we look? Does it? Like, can they all do do shit to make us, you know what I mean, with, with that GMO and altering our DNA? <coughs> well, <coughs> GMO have several different functions. It depends on which one it is. Some of them is like uh uh, burn holes in your stomach when you try to digest it and uh, and you get cause what's known as perforations and normally when you get them they either tell you you have scar tissue tissue on your colon or they tell you that you got diverticulitis and they have to cut a section in your intestines out because it got so bad those are side effects of gmos um we under the the system we going into next we ban all of the genetically modified organisms anything that uh you use chemicals to alter you won't be able to uh produce that shit no more it's gonna have to be destroyed but anything like for instance you are allowed to breed a german shepherd and a pit bull and come up with a new breed you're allowed to do that because you don't have to use chemicals you allowed to go into your greenhouse and make your string beans naturally become bigger from selectively changing the the, the breeding stock of your green beans. Yeah. It's permissible because it doesn't require chemicals or radiation to do it. And what's going to happen is when Atlas Shrug, that means the earth going to spike and send a massive uh, solar flare. And that solar flare going to hit the core of the earth and the earth is going to send out what's called the, uh, a death ray frequency. 
those who are natural to the earth it won't be affected at all they will never know what happened but it's gonna be a whole bunch of motherfuckers they already already started just gonna be dropping dead sudden to death adult death syndrome and shit right that's what's going to happen. One of the things that's going to happen in all genetically modified uh, like vegetation, that shit just going to shrivel up and turn brown and crusty. It doesn't belong yeah, here. Man, it I won't noticed, match the frequency. I noticed too, like back in the day when you used to buy fruits and shit like that, right? It used to last mm -hmm. longer. It was to last longer. Now it only lasts a couple of days. And it seemed like the fruit flies are more the pestilence. You know, the pestilence, the, the fruit flies is more of them than the normal than I ever seen before. Like in your house, well, like, one, like, one is you write about that because they were breeding fruit flies in laboratories in order for it to be an artificial plague. They was doing that, they was yeah. also doing it with breeding mosquitoes for the same reason yeah. and locusts. Oh. No, so we know they was doing it because they told us they was not because we so smart. We they said they was doing it and they showed it to us and they was doing it. So we know they was doing it. It's not a secret no more. But most of us think that's conspiracy theory. Man, I know I don't know. I, it's more nasty than I ever seen. Like it's a they all like we fought them. Like it was an ongoing war against gnats this this summer, like this this spring and summer, man. It was an ongoing depending on where you was at because yeah. wherever they release them at they're not gonna go far they only gonna go within the 50 mile radius mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and if you're close to one of the laboratories they constantly letting them out them motherfuckers they yeah, got some other shit they've been breeding in the laboratories too they bred they ex bred these joints extra and then they like they adapt they mutate meaning once you spray raid or some kind of they uh the, the fake shit they got on them they like, mm -hmm. like they absorb it and they don't kill them no more after a couple of days they don't even work on them no more these gnats these fruit flies mm -hmm. yeah no i like it i don't like to uh take out uh living creatures but these beings they 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 overpower you know insects trying to take over the planet anyway like the insects no, they're not. Us fucking hundred to one go ahead if the, insect, if the insects is trying to take over they been took this bitch that makes sense. They, 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 they just trying to live in harmony with the planet. The only motherfuckers that care about taking over is motherfuckers that ain't from here. Yeah, the right ones that's that. from here, we don't care about that shit. We just want everybody to live according to the great law. Leave us the fuck alone. Go under your own vine and fig tree and worship your shit there. And don't put your motherfucking dirty ass fingers in my plate. That's all. Yeah. We don't care nothing about taking over the world. Take over the world for what? I can only live on one motherfucking part of it at a time. What the fuck yeah, I want to take over the world for? Now, I wouldn't mind seeing the world. I wouldn't mind visiting the world. But insects don't... No, no animal organic to Earth had the selfish gene except the human. And here go the kicker. We can teach the selfish gene. We can teach animals how to be possessive. We call it jealousy. We, mm -hmm. Jealousy is teachable. That's why they got us all arguing about relationships all the time so that we can teach people how to live in a dysfunctional relationship rather than a functional multi-adult uh, household, well, what they call polygamy, right? So you got the men fighting with the women, women fighting with the men, and all these motherfuckers act like we just started having relationships in the 60s or something. We had we didn't have all these dear any relationships problems until somebody else told us that we can't live our natural lifestyle. Yeah, I remember that. We didn't have a problem getting along with our women before right. 1492. We didn't start having a problem getting along with our women until the 1900s. Yeah. So who did it? Yeah, it's the other did. side of patriarchy called feminism. That's the tale of the coin. The feminist was trying to deceive the matriarchs into leaving the patriarchs in power in the name of um, women's liberation. Women, true women's yeah. liberation can only come in on the matriarchy because that's the only way that the women's power is going to be enforced by the men. 
game, game. And the reason it's going to be enforced by the men is because it stems about the man being the center of his family raising his children. It don't got nothing to do with just because you a woman, you put on this suit and tie and act like a man. That's not matriarchy. Right. That's feminism. It's a difference, right? So when you look at the whole war effort, it makes sense. They would attack the relationships. Um, a book y'all might want to read to help y'all understand some of what I'm saying. Uh, Uncivil War, and the author name is Susie B. Something. Anyway, it's a pretty good book. And then there's another one um, called Bound by Love. It's a book about relationships. And the crazy part about that book, Elder, the Bound by Love book, is mm -hmm. they telling you a lot of the same stuff that Shahara's Lyle Ali talk about in Black Men Guide to Understanding the Black Woman. The only difference is ain't nobody in Bound by Love black. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they became legendary authors based on that work where Shahrazad Ali, because she was talking to us, became looked down upon and uh as a uh um like she don't have no morality and no sense of self. Yeah. But it's the same information from two different perspectives and because the skin colors is different, they got two different reactions. Oh you know how they do it. You know mm -hmm. how they do Hey, this is the yeah. last question I got for you, Raw. We got about nine minutes because everybody is still asking this question. I thought you had death for paper, death for the paperwork. I thought you had already did the death for the paperwork. Yeah. Asking, where do I go get signed up to be a more? Where do I sign up the the uh, to be uh, to get my uh, paperwork in this? So system? my so, suggestion for the ones that want to do paperwork. Is to call the State Department and say, "How do I sign up to be a slave in the new in the new era?" Just cut the middleman out the shit. You want to be a slave? Go sign up to be a slave. Just go on and call the State Department and say, "When the shit flip, I don't want my inheritance to the land. I want to be a slave to the new system that's coming on land." We don't believe in slavery, but we ain't gonna stop motherfucker that would rather work than inherit the shit. Right. We there is no reason for us right now to be doing no paperwork with this dead entity. Because you resurrecting the dead contract every time you do something with them. Right. And the more of us participating, the longer we dragging this shit out. The paperwork is a paper chain. If nationality is the order of the day, find out why a ship has a nationality and that might help you. Right. So you you think nationality nationality was when Noble Drew Ali here the rule of the day. We needed a nationality then under Noble Drew Ali because they was able to get us out of the grips of the invaders. They was able to walk into the courtroom and say you don't have jurisdiction over this man and walk up out of there with you. But one of the infiltrators fucked up the motherfucking system where now you, if you look on the back of your nationality card, it says the cardholder is a United States citizen. And you, if the only way you can be a citizen, you have to accept your straw man capacity, right? That's the difference between a citizen and a sovereign. The sovereign doesn't accept the straw man capacity at all. The the but the um, citizen. He fully enjoys the right of the straw man as long as the straw man's um, agency, which is government, is in effect, right? That we trying to get from under their shit and get under our shit. So if you want to do paperwork, you go do paperwork on your own, but leave me out of it. I don't want to be part of nobody being enslaved or oppressed. And speaking of paperwork, as soon as I get the green light, I'm going to be reading to y'all um, Dr. Malachi's release papers that he that been on been already ordered by the judge. But if some dude, I don't want to say his name. I don't know if it's cool to say his name on Elder Show. But this motherfucker was was hey, blocking. Say his, Bobby. Name. say his name. Nigga, that nigga, hey, say his name. Hey, I don't, well, hey, I don't know. I, 
I, I ain't want to be shooting at nobody while I'm on your show like that, Elder. We, we right, ain't we'll teaching the class. We'll get back on him later. We'll get on him later. We'll yeah, anyway, later. he was the he was the main stumbling block block to Baba, um, being able to put boots on the ground. Now yeah, that we know right. this, I'm just waiting on the green light to go ahead to read and to post those papers so that the people would know that the whole Malachi shit was a setup from the word go. It yeah, was all orchestrated. Know. It was all orchestrated by the enemy to get him off the street because of he was opening up something called the um, sacred record of the, uh, the, the, the sacred the record of the United Nation the United Nation of Wap Wapian. Wapian Moors. Yeah, that's right. When he started opening up those files, those are the files that show you his status as a chief on the land operating in sovereign capacity and that he had more jurisdictional right to evict them than they had to arrest him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. we want to we, we will get I want to get clearance for everything. So because I'm going to tell that nigga name because I go get that nigga myself. Yeah, we're going to put his name out as soon as we get the clearance to read that paperwork. We're going to put his name on blast because we know he got paid twenty thousand dollars in the sock. He got paid twenty thousand dollars. Then he tried to skip out of the country. We know who all involved. We couldn't finger everybody. everybody. Bob know every dirty player everybody that pretended to be New Albion. He knew every yeah, every dirty player. So now, yeah. while they was trying to sick me and uh, phase on each other, they gonna find out mm -hmm. that we've been on the same page. We just was saying it from two different perspectives. Mm -hmm. He was mm -hmm. fighting because for his immediate. Yeah, dirty he, man, the black hand. Yeah, in the background. yeah, 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 and so. That's what we were waiting on the clearance because people need to know how raw these motherfuckers was doing us, right? They knew that um, Emmett Till was going to grow up to be Chief Little Horn. They knew that while they murdered him. He had nothing to do with him whistling at that lady. He was practicing the whistling Dixie war cry. Mm -hmm. And there's shit. They didn't want to they fuck around and let him get there with a harmonica or kazoo and it was yeah, right. over with when they yeah. caught him whistling they had to get rid of him they knew who he was they knew who his daddy was mm. right so mm -hmm. now we at the part where we about to make these motherfuckers cough it up mm -hmm. we cough it up now the widow found her son go kick rocks mm -hmm. run that gold play boy and kick rocks we mm -hmm. indian givers Keep that in mind. We, 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 Goddamn right. Give me back my shit you look. <laughs> give me back my shit you stole. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And now they lied and say we gave it to them. They came over here. We gave them these fucking Etruscans, these keys, keys to doors. They yeah, but they, here, we gave that, them look, all in exchange for religion. In exchange listen, for religion. Listen. <laughs> they can't bring somebody over. Listen, they can't bring somebody over here. And give them a presidential chief status on the land, and then sign a treaty like it's ours, as if we not gonna never figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. We all of the tribes know we don't believe in giving up the land. We'll let you settle a piece of land yeah. if you want to build a homestead for yourself, but you're just not gonna come over and take no whole states of land. Yeah. We don't believe in that. That go all the way against the grain of our culture. That's exactly the wrong yeah. way to the grain. It, it doesn't hold up. So now, since we got back their loyal title, they fucked. Yeah, that's best way to put it. They fucked around in DC. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. They, they fucked around. Now they about to find out. They in the process yeah. of finding out in real time. Yeah. The 2024 yeah. is the, the year this shit's gonna roll unfold like it ain't nothing, bro. This shit finna start. Like you're gonna find out a lot of shit that's like behind the uh secret shit in the government and how they been criminals the whole goddamn time. Criminals. Mm -hmm. We we been uh, we been uh, these are criminals. That's why we're dealing with this. We're dealing with fucking criminals. Look, 
Savings Day coming up in Detroit in February. Yeah. I don't I ain't, ain't nobody told me nothing, but I believe at that savings day, yeah. we gonna have some people talking and we not gonna be prepared for who we got talking. Oh, let me see. I got an idea. Yeah, Fair kind gonna have some guests. Man, so keep an eye on that savings day because that motherfucker gonna be lit if it's what I think it is. I've been hearing the chatter in the on the on the Wind Talker channel, but I can't make it all out because they don't want me to know the details. Yeah, it's probably some sick of shit. Yeah, so whatever it is for this Savior's Day in Detroit, it's gonna be going down. And on that note, we can drop the mic and walk off stage. Hey, we're gonna come back with a quick Q and A, bro, because uh it's a lot. I'm writing these questions down that everybody asking on all your things. That uh, just let, let me know when you're ready. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna write them down and send them to you, so you can just go over. Them I don't, I, don't, them. I, don't, I want them dry. I don't want no prep. Yeah, okay, I want to dry. Spray out the dome. Spray out yeah. the dome. Freestyle king. Raw to freestyle yeah. king. Man. Larry told me proper preparation prevents poor performance. So if I ain't yeah. properly prepared, how I'm gonna perform flawlessly? You know. Hey, look. Hey, look. I'm telling you, come from the heart. I like how you do it. Hey. So, hey, we're about to get up out of here with the two hour mark, y'all. Hey, if you want to show Rod some love on the Cash App, we got the Cash App pending in the links. Also, we got his uh, Instagram link if you want, because people want to get into the lives. Hey, when you going to start back doing the live, Rod? When you let people in? Um, I don't know. I might do one tonight, but yeah, they ask, no, they I, ask I ain't going to do one tonight. Pro I'll probably do one tomorrow, tomorrow, Friday. Ain't it? Yeah. Uh, no, no, tomorrow, yeah. Thursday. 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 Yeah, yeah, Thursday. Yeah, I'll probably yeah, do one I'll tonight. Come back though on probably like Saturday or Sunday for that Q and A. Uh, whenever the, you next time you free on that Q and A because they was asking about that. Do 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 something else for Sunday. We just keep okay, the Sunday because I, I, I don't want to step in when you got something scheduled with the. Oh with no, the I only got shit. Uh, we got something with uh tomorrow then Saturday, so it'll be the uh Friday and Sunday, the two free days. Yeah, so uh yeah, so we'll do it on Sunday. We'll set it up for Sunday tonight. Okay. All right, we're gonna do a QA. Hey, say so, hey, y'all, we about to get up out of here. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button, man. This was a hit. If you ain't just not coming in, you might want to roll it back because Raw dropped a lot of heavy duty. If you're a science guy like I am and like DNA stuff on DNA, he really dropped some heavy duty stuff that they didn't really probably want us to know about our own DNA and how they altered it. Those uh, I need to figure out how to fix those broken uh, what you call like the the uh, the arrow DNA that's folding in your body. How can you? Yeah, the it? free radicals come yeah, from the. the uh, yeah, that the, as clean as you could do for it. Next time I have, we'll go over some of that. Okay, matter of fact, yeah, we're, I'm gonna go. We'll go into that on a question. I'm gonna write it down. We'll go into that on a, uh, how can you fix that on the next class Sunday. Okay. All right, so we are. Hey, peace, y'all. Love. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, shalom alaikum. Peace be unto you, hotel. Divine love throughout the boundless universe to all. Wadu. Never, never have it been made.